This may not be the latest watch from Ball, but one I've been wanting to check out for quite some time. In hand is the Ball Engineer 2 Green Berets, an all-black titanium case field watch with, of course, a lot of tritium tubes on the dial, a date magnifier, and a comfortable leather strap. Inside is a modified ETA or ETA 2824 that is COSC certified, all at a price point of just about $2,200. There are a lot of field watches in the market, all at different price points. So where does the ball green berets fit in? This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Let's get into the review and find out. So first things first, I think one thing many will remark about with this green berets is going to be the size. At 43 millimeters and no bezel, this isn't exactly a small watch, as a lot of field watches are coming out at 38 and 40 millimeters these days. I personally feel if this was smaller, it probably wouldn't work as well, and you couldn't have the same look with the large tritium blocks in the dial, as it would be a little too crowded. But I understand to some, this is a large watch, and to others it's going to be small. Sizing is just so subjective, but it is fun to see people on each side. I personally find this to be a great size, possibly because of the all-titanium case, asterisk there, more on that in a minute, and the 50mm lug-to-lug, -lug, and it just has a great look and feel. On the screen, you will see all the specifications, and the first thing I will talk about is this case. Now, before starting this review, I assumed this was a titanium case with a DLC coating. I had not gone back to the website yet, and so I just thought DLC. But anyways, it is not DLC, it is rather a titanium carbide coating, much like LumTech and others have used over the years. Now when it comes down to the look, this is a black case, but almost a dark gunmetal when you really get close. Now when it comes to durability, the obvious question, which is going to be better? Well, technically all are PBD, as that is the process of how that coating will be applied. And then of course you have DLC, TIC, which this is, aluminum titanium nitrate uh, is another one. They're all different coatings, but all kind of the same. It's different levels of arrangements of carbon and other elements, and they all should have similar hardness and durability. Now as odd as this may sound, I'm very happy to see this model has a screw down crown especially with only 100 meters of water resistance. Most inexpensive field watches will go with a push-pull crown, but this is not an expensive at $2,200, so I expect nothing short of the best. This crown is large enough to grasp with my medium to large size fingers, and it has a solid feel, and it screws down smoothly into the case. As with any ball watch, yes, this is full of tritium tubes, which really does define the look of the dial, especially with the way ball does it with the large glass rectangles covering the tritium tubes. And I don't think these large tubes or these large glass coverings look good on every watch, but it definitely works here. With the exception of the large date magnifier, the dial is pretty clean and to, uh, void of too much text. I feel ball used restraint here, and I'm glad they did. As with most ball watches, they feel the need to give a caliber number to the movement, which makes it sound like an in-house movement, but this is just a modified ETA 2824, most likely with a custom rotor, but it is COC certified, and it's nice to see with the price of $2,200. What you won't see, though, is the movement, as there is no ex uh, exhibition case back here, rather a beautiful stamped case back, which I much prefer than looking at a mundane movement. One thing to note though, the case back is not titanium. It's stainless steel. So is the buckle as well. I kept wondering why this watch had more heft and weight to it than it would be just being all titanium. And sure enough, I took a small magnet to the case and case back to find out. I'm not sure why they chose to do this. Not only does it add weight, but titanium is far more hypoallergenic than steel. With that all said, if you'd like a little more heft to your watches, and thus always avoid titanium watches, this one with the stainless steel case back and buckle may be one to try out. It's still not going to have the weight of an all stainless steel watch, but it also doesn't feel like you were wearing almost nothing on your wrist like most titanium watches do. On my 7.5 inch wrist, it's a pretty perfect fit. 
50 millimeter lug to lug keeps it well from going over the edges of my wrist and the 43 millimeter case size might be too large for some but again on my wrist it looks and feels just great. The leather strap is soft, comfortable, has a distressed look, and overall is just a very quality leather strap. But then there's the color. This is a mustard tan, and it's distressed and will get darker over time, but will never look like the brown that they show on their website. Not sure why there is such a difference in the color of the straps they show versus what you actually get. Of course, one of the benefits of tritium tubes is you do not need a light source for the loom to be charged up. These T25 tritium tubes will glow in complete darkness no matter what, and should be the same brightness for at least 10 years. But when I say complete darkness, I mean complete darkness, which for a camera is hard to capture them glowing as any hint of light will take that glow away. I did my best to show off the loom here, but trust me, if you go into a dark room, these tubes are going to glow the whole time. Ball, I think, has fallen into uh, a little bit under the radar the past few years. I'm not sure exactly why. They're Swiss-made. They have countless models available in all sizes and shapes. And have some really out-there-looking pieces, especially some of the divers, as well as a more classic-looking field watch, such as this Green Berets. That said, maybe it's the tritium tubes, as I know not everyone loves them. But I think Ball does build a great-looking watch, but I also wonder what this would look like with applied superluminova instead of the tritium. What is your take? Do you like ball watches? Or do you own a few? Or have you never given them a second look? And if so, why? Explain down in the comment section below, as I always want to hear from you. That's all for this one. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And you can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Watch Report. If you'll want to read even more on this piece, go to the description below for a link to a full written review. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.